retail banking and financing. So firstly we will understand the meaning of retail banking. Retail banking refers to the banking in which banking institutions execute transactions directly with consumers rather than corporations or other banks. Services offered include savings and checking accounts, mortgages, personal loans, debit cards, credit cards and so forth. It is a typical mass market banking in which individual customers use local branches of larger commercial banks. Services offered include savings and checking accounts, mortgages, personal loans, debit cards, credit cards and certificates of deposit. Retail banking aims to be the one-stop shop for as many financial services as possible on behalf of retail clients. Retail lending is the practice of loaning money to individuals rather than institutions. Retail lending is done by banks, credit unions and savings and loan associations. These institutions make loan for automobile purchases, home purchases, medical care, home repair, vacations and other consumer uses. Retail lending has taken a prominent role in the lending activities of banks as the availability of credit and the number of products offered for retail lending has grown. The amounts loaned through retail lending are usually smaller than those loaned to businesses. Retail lending may take the form of installment loans which must be paid off little by little over the course of years or non-installment loans which are paid off in one lump sum. There are two types of retail lending schemes which are asset focused segment, liability focused segment. Asset based lending is any kind of lending secured by an asset. This means if the loan is not repaid the asset is taken. It includes housing finance, consumer durable finance, vehicle finance, personal loan, advance against future lease rentals, mortgage loan, pension loan, etc. It has two important features. First is margin, which is the contribution brought in by the borrower. Margin requirements vary from bank to bank and from one type of finance to other. Second one is interest. The rate of interest has been deregulated by the Apex Monetary Authority, which suggests that the rate of interest offered by one bank for a retail lending scheme may not match with the one offered by the other bank. The rate of interest is decided by the individual banks. Liability focused loans include all types of deposits offered by banks. Here the lending is secured by liability. We can discuss liability focused segments further in this lesson. After studying this lesson we should be able to Understand the concept of retail banking. Enumerate different types of accounts and provisions for different customers. Analyze the concept of retail financing. Discuss briefly about housing, auto loans and consumer durable loans. Now let's discuss liability focused segments which can be divided into four types of account. Savings account, current account, term deposit, recurring deposit. First we discussed saving account. Savings account are accounts maintained by retail financial institutions that pay interest but cannot be used directly as money. These accounts let customers set aside a portion of their liquid assets while earning a monetary return. Savings bank accounts are meant to promote the habit of saving among the citizens while allowing them to use their funds when required. The main advantage of savings bank account is its high liquidity and safety. Saving bank account can be opened in the name of an individual or in joint names of the depositors. Saving bank account can also be opened and operated by the miners provided they have completed 10 years of age. The minimum balance to be maintained in an ordinary savings bank account varies from bank to bank. It is less in case of public sector banks 
and comparatively high in case of private banks. Documents required for opening a savings account. Two passport size photographs, proof of residence, that is passport, driving license, gas, telephone, electricity bill, ration card, voter's identity card. An introduction of the person from an existing account holder. PAN number. Now let's discuss current account. A current account is a financial account with a bank or a financial institution. It enables account holders to make or receive an unlimited number of payments as frequently as they wish. Thus current accounts are considered as an essential tool for businessmen. Current accounts are check operated accounts meant neither for the purpose of earning interest nor for the purpose of savings but only for convenience of business. Hence they are non-interest bearing accounts. In a current account a customer can deposit any amount of money any number of times. He can also withdraw any money as many times as he wants as long as he has the funds to his credit. Generally a higher minimum balance as compared to savings account is required to be maintained in current account. As per RBI directive banks are not allowed to pay an interest on the balances maintained in current accounts. However, in case of death of the account holder, his legal hires are paid interest at the rates applicable to savings bank deposit from the date of death till the date of settlement. Because of the large number of transactions in the account and volatile nature of balances maintained, banks usually levy certain service charges for operating a current account. Documents required are same as of saving account. The third one is term deposit. It is a deposit held at a financial institution that has a fixed term. These are generally short term with maturities ranging anywhere from a month to a few years. When a term deposit is purchased, the lender understands that the money can only be withdrawn after the term has ended or by giving a predetermined number of days notice. Term deposits are an extremely safe investment and are therefore very appealing to conservative low risk investors. By having the money tied up you will generally get a higher rate with a term deposit compared to demand deposit. It is best suited for all class of persons. There is great flexibility in maturity period and it ranges from 15 days to 5 years. The interest can be compounded quarterly, half yearly or annually and varies from bank to bank. Minimum deposit amount is rupees 1000 and there is no upper limit. Loan or overdraft facility is available against bank fixed deposits. Premature withdrawal is permissible but it involves loss of interest. The amount invested in fixed deposits with a maturity period of 5 years in a scheduled bank is eligible for tax deduction under Section 80C. However, the interest earned on the deposit is taxable. The fourth one is recurring deposit account. Under a recurring deposit account, a specific amount is invested in bank on monthly basis for a fixed rate of return. The deposit has a fixed tenure at the end of which the principal sum as well as the interest earned during that period is returned to the investor. Recurring bank account provides the element of compulsion to save at high rates of interest applicable to term deposits along with liquidity to access those savings anytime. There is great flexibility in period of deposit with maturity ranging from 6 months to 120 months. The minimum monthly deposit varies from bank to bank. In most of the public sector banks, one can start a recurring deposit account with a monthly installment of rupees 100 only. There is no upper limit on investing. The rate of interest varies between 7 and 11 percent depending on the maturity period. Loan or overdraft facility is also available against recurring bank deposits. In case of recurring deposit being closed before completing the original term of the deposit, 
interest will be paid at the rate applicable on the date of deposit for the period for which the deposit has remained with the bank. Premature withdrawal is also permissible but penalty. Now let's discuss Reserve Bank of India's model policy on bank deposits. The Reserve Bank of India is empowered to issue directives or advices on interest rates on deposits and other aspects regarding conduct of deposit accounts from time to time. With liberalization in the financial system and deregulation of interest rates, banks are now free to formulate deposit products within the broad guidelines issued by RBI. RBI model policy has made regulations on following matters. First among them are types of accounts. Definition of major deposit schemes are as under. Demand deposits means a deposit received by the bank which is withdrawable on demand. Savings deposit means a form of demand deposit which is subject to restrictions as to the number of withdrawals as also the amount of withdrawals permitted by the bank during any specified period. Term deposit means a deposit received by the bank for a fixed period withdrawable only after the expiry of the fixed period and include deposits such as recurring or double benefit deposits, short deposits, fixed deposits, monthly income certificate, quarterly income certificate, etc. Notice deposit means term deposit for specific period but withdrawable on giving at least one complete banking day's notice. Current account means a form of demand deposit where from withdrawals are allowed any number of times depending upon the balance in the account or up to a particular agreed amount and will also include other deposit accounts which are neither savings deposit nor term deposit. Second is account opening and operation of deposit account. It includes the bank before opening any deposit account will carry out due diligence as required under Know Your Customer and PAN number as per guidelines issued by RBI. The account opening forms and other material would be provided to the prospective depositor by the bank. The same will contain details of information to be furnished and documents to be produced for verification. For deposit products like savings bank account and current deposit account, the bank will normally stipulate certain minimum balances to be maintained as part of terms and conditions governing operation of such accounts. Failure to maintain minimum balance in the account will attract levy of charges as specified by the bank from time to time. The due diligence process while opening a deposit account will involve satisfying the identity of the person, verification of address, satisfying his occupation and source of income. The above mandates will be applicable to or become operational only on or after the date of maturity of term deposits. This mandate can be modified by the consent of all account holders. Next is the regulation for interest payment. Interest shall be paid on savings account at the rate specified by Reserve Bank of India directive from time to time. However, term deposit interest rates are decided by the bank within the general guidelines issued by the Reserve Bank of India from time to time. The rate of interest on deposits will be prominently displayed in branch premises. The bank has statutory obligation to deduct tax at source if the total interest paid or payable on all term deposits held by a person exceeds the amount specified under the Income Tax Act. Another one is for minor account. The minor can open savings bank account and the same can be operated by the natural guardian or by the minor himself or herself if he or she is above the age of 10 years. On attaining majority, the erstwhile minor should confirm the balance in his or her account. The bank may at its discretion open deposit accounts other than current accounts of illiterate person. The account of such person may be opened provided he or she calls on the bank personally 
along with a witness who is known to both the depositor and the bank. Normally, no checkbook facility is provided for such savings bank account. The bank shall not disclose details or particulars of the customer's account to a third person or party without the expressed or implied consent from the customer. However, there are some exceptions, viz. disclosure of information under compulsion of law, where there is a duty to public to disclose and where interest of the bank requires disclosure. The bank on request from the depositor at its discretion may allow withdrawal of term deposit before completion of the period of the deposit agreed upon at the time of placing the deposit. The bank shall declare their penal interest rate policy for premature withdrawal of term deposit. In case the depositor desires to renew the deposit by seeking premature closure of an existing term deposit account, the bank will permit the renewal at the applicable rate on the date of renewal provided the deposit is renewed for a longer period than the balance period of the original deposit. The bank may consider request of the depositors for loan or overdraft facility against term deposits duly discharged by the depositors on execution of necessary security documents. The facility is not offered through all bank branches and wherever the facility is offered, allotment of safe deposit vault will be subject to availability and compliance with other terms and conditions attached to the service. Safe deposit lockers may be hired by an individual singly or jointly with another individual, HUFs, firms, limited companies, associates, societies, trusts, etc. Depositors having any complaint with regard to services rendered by the bank have a right to approach authority designated by the bank for handling customer grievances. The branch officials shall provide all required information regarding procedure for lodging the complaint. In case the depositor does not get response from the bank within 60 days from the date of complaint or he is not satisfied with the response received from the bank, he has a right to approach banking ombudsman appointed by the Reserve Bank. Now let's discuss retail financing in detail. It is the credit given by commercial banks to the retail sector comprising housing loan, vehicle loan, consumer durable loan, credit card advances and personal loans during the period of financial deregulation. It includes various banking services which we will discuss one by one. Overdraft. An overdraft occurs when withdrawals from a bank account exceed the available balance. In this situation, a person is said to be overdrawn. If there is a prior agreement with the account provider for an overdraft protection plan and the amount overdrawn is within this authorized overdraft limit, then interest is normally charged at the agreed rate. If the balance exceeds the agreed terms, then fees may be charged and higher interest rate might apply. Demand Loans Demand loans are loan agreements that provide the lender with the ability to demand full payment of the remaining balance of the loan at any point in time after the loan is executed. Unlike an installment loan, the demand loan format does not include a specific maturity date and may not include a specific schedule for making payments to retire the debt. Sometimes referred to as a call loan, a demand loan is usually employed when the lender and borrower have a long-standing and positive business relationship and the lender has confidence that the borrower will pay off the loan within a reasonable period of time. Term loans, which we have already discussed earlier. Cash credit advance. This account is the primary method in which banks lend money against the security of commodities and debt. It runs like a current account except that the money that can be withdrawn from this account is not restricted to the amount deposited in the account. Instead, the account holder is permitted to withdraw a certain sum called limit or credit facility in excess of the amount deposited in the account. 
Bill finance. It is a bill of exchange that, when accepted by a bank, becomes a source of short-term credit for working capital rather than import or export finance. Finance bills, which usually have maturities longer than 60 days, are sometimes issued in tight money periods. They are subject to reserve requirements unlike ordinary bankers' acceptances and cannot be rediscounted at the Federal Reserve window, also called a banker's bill or working capital acceptance. Packing credit. Packing credit is a loan or cash credit facility sanctioned to an exporter in the pre-shipment stage. This loan facilitates the exporter to purchase raw materials at competitive rates and manufacture or produce goods according to the requirement of the buyer and organized to have it packed for onward export. Inland letter of credit. Inland letter of credit is issued to meet out the credit requirements for domestic trade. This is a form of no fund based credit extended by the banks. This is given to the seller of the goods on behalf of the buyer by the bank where the buyer deals. It offers the comfort of obligation from the banker to the issue of the inland letter of credit that they undertake to make good of the loss. Guarantee. A guarantee is by which one person assumes responsibility for paying another's debts or fulfilling another's responsibility in case of default. A guarantee is for the execution, completion or existence of something. At last, let's discuss various types of loan being offered by bank. First among them is overdrafts or demand loans against bank deposits. It is the loan with no specific maturity date but payable at any time. Only interest is paid until the principal is paid off or until the lender demands repayment of principal. The borrower may, however, pay off the loan early without incurring a prepayment penalty. If the funds are advanced to a broker, it is referred to as a call loan. Demand loans are common with new business ventures where it may take time to get the idea up and running. The borrower does not have to worry about installments and loan terms because they have agreed to pay it back once the venture is turning a profit. The borrower may make a small payment every now and then as a gesture but will usually pay it back when profits allow. For a lender, a demand loan can be quite secure and lucrative. The longer the borrower takes to pay it back, the more interest is earned. However, the lender doesn't have to wait until a maturity date and if they fall on hard times, they can call the loan or if they suspect the borrower will fall on hard times or is deliberately avoiding paying the loan, they can demand repayment. This is a great security measure to ensure repayment. For example, if the lender senses or sees the borrower going down a bad financial path, they can call the loan before it defaults. If there is a default with a regular loan, the lender may only get a portion of the money back. Think of it as a preemptive strike. Next one is term loans. Term loans are the basic vanilla commercial loan. They typically carry fixed interest rates and monthly or quarterly repayment schedules and include a set maturity date. Bankers tend to classify term loans into two categories. Intermediate term loans. Usually running less than three years, these loans are generally repaid in monthly installments from a business cash flow. Long term loans. These loans are commonly set for more than three years. Most are between three and ten years and some run for as long as twenty years. Long term loans are collateralized by business assets and typically require quarterly or monthly payments derived from profits or cash flow. It is appropriate for established small businesses that can leverage sound financial statements and substantial down payments to minimize monthly payments and total loan costs. Term loans require collateral and a relatively rigorous approval process but can help reduce risk by minimizing costs.
One thing to consider when getting a term loan is whether the interest rate is fixed or floating. A fixed interest rate means that the percentage of interest will never increase regardless of the financial market. Low interest periods are usually an excellent time to take out a fixed rate loan. Floating interest rates will fluctuate with the market which can be good or bad for you depending on what happens with the global and national economy. Since some term loans last for 10 years, betting that the rate will stay consistently low is a real risk. Next is a housing loan. Home loan is a secured loan offered against the security of a house or property which is funded by the bank's loan. The property could be a personal property or a commercial one. The home loan is a loan taken by a borrower from the bank issued against the property or security intended to be bought on the part by the borrower giving the banker a conditional ownership over the property. That is, if the borrower failed to pay back the loan, the banker can retrieve the lent money by selling the property. There are different types of home loans available in the market to cater to borrower's different needs. Home Purchase Loan This is the basic type of home loan which has the purpose of purchasing a new house. Home Improvement Loan This type of home loan is for the renovation or repair of the home which is already brought. Home Extension Loan This type of loan serves the purpose when the borrower wants to extend or expand an existing home like adding an extra room etc. Home Conversion Loan it is that loan wherein the borrower has already taken a home loan to finance his current home but now wants to move to another home. The conversion home loan helps the borrower to transfer the existing loan to the new home which requires extra funds so the new loan pays the previous loan and fulfills the money required for the new home. Bridge Loan this type of loan helps finance the new home of the borrower when he wants to sell the existing home. This is normally a short term loan to the borrower and helps during the interim period when he wants to sell the old home and wants to buy a new one. It is given till the time a buyer is found for the old home. Home Construction Loan This type of loan taken when the borrower wants to construct a new home. Land Purchase Loan it is that loan which is taken to purchase a land for construction and investment purposes. Acquiring a home loan doesn't only involve the cost of home loan interest rates, but it also includes other charges and fee accompanying at various stages of taking the home loan like processing charges, administrative charges, etc. Next is auto loan. Auto loans are loans which you obtain in your own name for the purpose of purchasing a car or any other personal use vehicles. They cannot be used for other expenses or for other purchases. They must be spent on a car which the lender then uses as collateral to secure the loan. They are repaid to the lender monthly or at some other period agreed upon by both parties. Personal card loans are the responsibility of the individual who sign for the loan and not their company or business. Lastly, there is the consumer durable loan. Banks are coming out with unique loans to attract more customers. Right from refrigerator to music systems to washing machine, you can buy anything. The demand for such loans witnesses a sharp rise during the festive season. 0% loan schemes are popular during this time. This loan is however available only with nationalized banks. The quantum of the loans varies from one bank to another. However, most banks offer loans between rupees 10,000 and rupees 1 lakh. The rate of interest on consumer durable loan is lower than the interest on a personal loan. So taking this loan makes more sense. The rate of interest varies between banks and also depends on... Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Retail lending is the practice of loaning money to institutions rather than individuals. Right or wrong?
Wrong. Savings bank accounts can be opened and operated by the minors provided they have completed 10 years of age. Right or wrong? Right. Minimum deposit amount for fixed deposit is rupees 1000 and there is no upper limit. Right or wrong? Right. Let's revise the whole concept. Retail banking has wider connotation and is not the same as that of retail lending. Retail banking refers to the efforts of the bankers to reach up to the customers on both fronts of the balance sheet, that is, liability side as well as asset side. Under the liability sides, we have deposits. Unless the banker designs the products according to the needs of the customers and facilitate better bargain to them in terms of rate interest, time and delivery channels, it is not easy for them to solicit business in this segment. In the asset side, we have credit or loan schemes of the various banks. The job of the banker has become very difficult in this segment too. Retail lending, a departure from conventional advance, offers higher yield, quicker turn, the possibility of less incidence of the account going bad or non-performing if it is monitored on an ongoing basis. A current account may be opened by individuals singly or jointly, partnership firm, company, association, institution, trust, society, etc. One of the important functions of the bank is to accept deposits from the public for the purpose of lending. In fact, depositors are the major stakeholders of the banking system. Efficient management of loans and advances portfolio has assumed greater significance as it is the largest asset of the bank having direct impact on its profitability. Overdraft and demand loans may be granted to customers against deposits lying at the credit of the borrowers and or third parties in the books of the branch making such advance or any branch of the bank. Term loans are generally granted to finance capital expenditure, that is, for acquisition of land, building and plant and machinery, required for setting up a new industrial undertaking or expansion or diversification of an existing one and also for acquisition of movable fixed assets.